Total War Warhammer 3, patch 1.3. Let's get into the biggest changes we've made from your feedback. As with our previous patch, the regiments of Renown are making their way into the game. This time we'll see Sky Striders, the Righteous Lancers of Wei Jin, Oathbreakers of Tor, Barons of the Bog, Knights of Immobilation, Eternal Entourage, and Heralds of Korn's Fury. All 3LC, of course. In multiplayer, land battles have been introduced to rank matchmaking, giving you a 50-50 chance of landing either a domination or land battle game. In battle, a number of changes have been made to help with the unit responsiveness and pathfinding, including how units navigate settlement entrances and react to retreat orders. Ranged units firing with a clear line of sight, Iron Guts successfully hitting melee infantry, and improved dueling between single entity units. Smaller artillery and chariot units no longer have collision when dead to help alleviate issues with large entities pathfinding, and Miao Ying's Dragon Augments will be fully available, allowing her to access her Eye of the Storm ability when in dragon form as intended. AI armies will focus much less on backline units, encouraging more meaningful tactics on the battlefield, and reducing likelihood of them marching straight past city defences. The AI will also no longer be able to use army abilities in situations where they shouldn't be able to, for example after a battle has ended, or before they have accumulated enough resources. Moving into campaign, We've refreshed some of the buildings and building chain descriptions, updated technologies across various races, and further streamlined the character list. Kurgan Warband Army's spawn rate has been slowed to decrease their intensity during Cathay campaigns, and a number of character skills have been updated and improved traits will also be dished out upon defeating any of the legendary lords. Plagues have received an update. For Nurgle, we can see a replacement of the attrition effect on the Flux system with an increase in casualties from attrition, and reduced base duration of the Agu Plague from 3 to 2. For the Demon Prince Plagues, we removed the attrition effect from Bow Steep and increased the Nurgle corruption provided, and we replaced the attrition effect from the Red Agu with an increase in casualties from attrition. We've increased the rewards given by Ogre Kingdom's contracts. All three missions will now have the bonus reward, meat, grow from camps or a rare magical item, and treasure rewards will be roughly twice the amount. The minimum reward has been increased from 500 to 1,500, with the amount determined by the issuing faction's treasury. When AI has collected all four souls and teleports to the Forge of Souls, the player will now be asked if they want to teleport immediately to meet them. This will only be available if the player's faction leader is in the state where they can teleport. Speaking of the Chaos Realms, we've made some tweaks to them. In the Siege Realm, AP won't be removed when the player interacts with a point of interest. Sigils will now be revealed when the player enters and exits a teleport locus and the AI now has to teleport 8 times before accessing the final area. In the final battle, we've tweaked the units that flow in from the base of the map to be less frustrating. We've also updated the last wave to only count Belakor for completion. Once he is killed, the rest of the demons will crumble and the battle will be complete. We've also toned down the number of soul grinders that accompany Belakor in the final wave. Other bug fixes have been made for Arcane Surge, flying units leaving melee combat, multiplayer game lists and more. For a full list of all the changes in patch 1.3, check out our website.